guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Saints and Scoundrels, made by GCRS Games and created by Gary Chavez. It plays two to six players, takes about half an hour or so and is for ages 12 and up. In the game Saints and Scoundrels, you will be playing as uh, Saints and Scoundrels. After you avoiding Dr. Zyko, then you're trying to basically bluff your opponent to moving across a track. As you progress the across this track, you'll be placing cards face down. Having your opponent decide if you're bluffing or not, it feels a little bit like the game Coup, but it has a unique track that offers some different elements of play as well as some unique cards that will counter other cards and vice versa as well as the option to draw the dreaded Dr. Zyko cards. If you get too many Dr. Zykos at the end of the game regardless of whether or not, or not you get across the board you're going to lose but if you don't it might be a good way to push your luck even further. Anyway the person who reaches the end of the board without having three or more Dr. Zykos at the end of the game in front of them is the winner. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what you get in the game and how to play. So here is the game Saints and Scoundrels, and it is all set up for three players. Now I'm going to go ahead and explain what everything is before we get into the setup. The first thing is a deck of cards where you'll be getting grifters, thugs, saboteurs, hitmen, madmen, witnesses, analysts, and informants. There are green type cards, which are these guys here, and then there are the red type cards, and then finally there's the uh, madman and grifter cards that don't necessarily do anything, but they have combinations, and these guys can be used to either bluff or to move along the board here in this way. Everybody who has a colored player character is also going to get a character meeple and you're going to set the board up based on the number of players. If you're including more people then you're going to flip it over to the B side and if you're not you're going to have it on the A side. One to four is the A side five to six is the B side here. This shows your character and the color and it is both front and back which shows both males and females of I think their respective uh, race and gender on each side. It's kind of a nice way of adding diversity to the game. They have the de different detectives and you're all playing as detectives. These are the types of cards and what they do if you are successful in moving, if you want to try and counter those cards, or if you're playing a madman or a grifter. And then of course there's the Dr. Zyko combos. Dr. Zyko combos are utilized with these cards here and Dr. Zyko cards are pretty simple. It's just kind of his face on it, or it won't have its his face on it, which, let's see if I can find one. Ooh, these are all Dr. Zyko cards that don't have, that have a face. That's scary. Here's one that doesn't. Basically, uh, throughout the game, you're going to be drawing these cards. If you do your Dr. Zyko combo or call people out for not having it, you might potentially get one of these cards. And if you get three heads in front of you at the end of the game, which you won't know until the end of the game, you will lose. This is the case file cards. Whenever your little meeples here hit one of these yellow spaces, you'll draw them. And based on what they say, you'll either be able to utilize them instantly or maybe be able to choose to wait. And these are the additional character cards. So these steps are pretty simple. Have these three different uh, spaces here and put them together based on wh whether or not it's a four, five, or six player game or a two or three. Shuffle this deck of cards along with all of these cards in it as well and then deal out two cards to every single player in the game. No one's going to get to see these cards except for the player whose cards they are. So as you can see, we've got the blue menthol character, the redmond character, and the greenwood, which I guess symbolizes the color of the cards. And they all have their two cards to start with. You can move the Dr. Zyko cards somewhere else away from the, uh, the board here, and then you're pretty much ready to go. We're not utilizing these characters or these meeples, so we can actually move them off the board. Then we're going to simply try to get our characters all the way across. And how that works is the first player to start, whether it be this character here, which we'll start with her, we'll get to look at their cards. Now she has an informant and a hitman. An informant is a card that will let you move four, and a hitman is a character that can block an informant. So it's a good thing that they have uh, this hitman here, so they know there's one less in the deck. And it also tells you how many uh, hitmans are in the deck. There's three totalists in the entire deck, so it's very unlikely these guys have one. So now she's going to be able to choose one card and place it face down and then she can call it whatever she wants she can call it a witness an analyst or an informant and then people can choose to believe her, her or not if they believe her she's simply going to move her character based on the number of spaces that the card that she called was so if she said it was an informant she'd move four one two three four or maybe let's say she wanted to say it was an analyst she could go ahead and move one two and three because that's going to actually offer her a free one of these east side strangler cards 
But, so she's called her card out. Now everybody can look in their hands. He's got some grifters, and this player's got a witness and a grifter. So they might be able to choose to do one of two things. They can either challenge her card, or they can try and counter her card. If they challenge and just say, I think you're lying, in which case I'd like you to reveal it. And if she does, she'll flip over the card. If she's telling the truth, she'll get to move whatever number of spaces it says, as long as she was telling the truth. And then she'll choose to either move her head one more space or move somebody back one space. The per or move the person back who called her on it one space. In which case, they go to this no challenge area. When you're in the no challenge area, you can't be challenged or countered uh, in any regard. And you, that's just kind of like your penalty for being one space back. But of course, if you're back here, you'll be able to call a card out and move up forward because nobody can challenge you as well. It's a nice way of doing it. So and that is the other, the, another way, of course, is somebody can go ahead and say, I actually have a hitman and I'm going to stop you. Now that goes back to blue. Blue can say, oh, I, I agree that you have a hitman. I'm actually just going to go ahead and pull my, pull out and discard this card and not move whatsoever. So it's kind of a choice that they can make. Now, if they say, you know what? I still want to move. I know I've got this hitman. It's, they're both face down. He just said he has a, I know I have this informant. He just said he has this hitman. Uh, I'm going to call you on it. So he or she will reveal if they are lying, then they, without having to look, without having to reveal, can actually go ahead and still move up their spaces. And additionally, they can make this player go back one or they themselves can move up one. And then the other cases, like I said before, if they believe the red, then they can say, okay, and the cards will just go ahead and get discarded. So let's just say in this case that she didn't believe red, they revealed their card, which is a grifter. It's not a hitman. So blue will move up one, two, three, and four. And instead of pushing red back, they will go up one more space, letting them draw an east side strangler card. Some of these will say use now, like this one specifically says, in which case it'll say draw, and, draw up until you have three cards and then discard any one card in your hand. So these two cards are gonna go. And then each player is going to get one card. And then this player will draw an extra card and then discard a card that they may or may not want. So maybe they'll go ahead and discard this Grifter card here, keeping the Saboteur and the Hitman in their hand. And then this card will go. Other cards in the deck will say keep until used. Like, for instance, that Century Oil Company, which says you can call any opponent's bluff and override the normal bonus. And if you're right, you get to move three spaces. And if you're wrong, you don't suffer any penalty. These can be very useful throughout the game. After that happens, she has either moved or not moved or pushed somebody back or not. The next player will get to go and they will get to choose to place a card down. The other option is they can simply discard a grifter. They say, I'm going to discard this grifter here and I'm going to move up one space. No one can call you on that. You simply will just get to move. You'll draw a new card and your turn will be done. This player over here, he's got his witness and he's got a grifter. So the witness will let you move two spaces. It's not so bad. But there's one more thing in the game that you can do. And that one more thing is you can use a Dr. Zyko combo. Dr. Zyko combo requires you to have these specific sidelines here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. So here's a yellow, which shows that there. And this is another yellow right there. It, of course, is more of a wild. It has all three. But if you have two cards that are of the same type, you can place them face down and say, Dr. Zyko combo. Even if you don't have one, though, like, for instance, this player does not, you can still call out as Dr. Zyko combo. And what that means is you're going to have to draw two Dr. Zyko cards. These, remember, if you have too many of these at the end of the game, we will lose too many of these, these heads. You'll lose the game. So this player's call out a Dr. Zyko, and now anybody can choose to challenge that claim. If they challenge that claim and this player does not have one, he's going to draw another Dr. Zyko card. If he does, they will draw a Dr. Zyko card, the person who challenged, and this player will get to do whatever it says the combo requires. But let's just say no one challenged this player. He will simply move up seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And uh, then it would draw up to his hand size of two. Very, very fast movement, uh, but at the possibility of losing the game. These two cards will get discarded. You can choose to discard face down as well. Then it would move back to the first player and it would continue going that way until somebody hit the end of the board. So if the game ended like this in some way, then you're going to, all you have to do at the end of the game is check to see uh, if the player who won had the Dr. Zyko, too many Dr. Zyko cards. So for instance, in this case, green ends up winning. He will then have to reveal to see if he has too many heads. He's got two out of the three, so he is safe. But if he actually had this card instead, he would have lost. So it's kind of a press your luck. There are two heads. There are, the, there are zeros in here. There are ones and there are twos. And there's a small amount of twos and there's only two of them. There's a small amount of, of ones and it's like a mix of ones and zeros and a small amount of twos. 
But that's the basic idea of the game. Can you get your character all the way across the board without having too many insanity points? And can you bluff your way to victory in the game Saints versus Scoundrels or Saints and Scoundrels? All right, let's come up and I will talk about it and give my review. A couple little caveats before we get into my review and discussion of the game. The first is if the Saints and Scoundrel deck runs out, reshuffle it along with any deck that also were to run out, reshuffle that as well. If you get to the end of the track, but you have too many Dr. Zyko cards or heads, you're then going to lose. And the next player up will have a chance to win. So in this case, if you had one guy that was all the way at the end of this board here, this guy, and he had too many, then this blue player would win. But if this player also had too many, then the next player would win. I think you get the idea. Um, the red cards are called menace cards. Those are like the hitman and the grifter and all those guys and uh, they are the ones that will counter cards. Uh, that's pretty much the idea of the game. There's a couple different variants that I didn't play with. One is the high risk, which is instead of the challenger getting to decide to move forward one or move your opponent back one, you're gonna do both. The other one is the card counter bane, which will, let you, which will start by you discarding five cards from the top of the Saints and Scoundrels deck, making f five cards less and you don't know which cards have been discarded. And the final one is the detective story, which is kind of an RP of types where you're playing as detectives also telling a story. Saints and Scoundrels is a bluffing game at its core. It also is a push, it's push your luck game as well. And why I say that is because you will want to utilize your Dr. Zyko cards or the combo itself to draw those cards to push yourself from the back to the front at the cost of potentially losing the game. But it is a great way of also catching up. So maybe you're not so good at bluffing, but you do like pushing your luck. You'll have that option in the game. I would suggest doing a little bit of both. You can potentially lie your entire way throughout this game. However, you cannot not lie your entire way through this game because most likely at some point in the game, you're going to be stuck with maybe two of the menace cards in your hand or a menace card and a madman, in which case those cards are counter cards. And so when, during your turn, you'll have to play one face down and say it's one of the cards that it actually is not. And then players will choose to counter you or not. So you do have to have a little bit more lying in this game than you would in something like Sheriff of Nottingham, where you'd be able to tell the truth the entire way through, which works in this game because it is a moody type of a noir detective game so you always have to be kind of bending the rules just a little bit to get just that much more ahead and of course the players that are so far behind because they're not good at bluffing you're going to see them start using dr zyko combos quite a bit and then also hoping that other players will call them on it especially if they have it because then those players will get the dr zyko cards and it can catch you up definitely but at the cost of potentially not winning the game it's very likely you're not going to want to get more than four of these cards because realistically if you do you're probably going to lose there are in some cases exceptions to that specific rule that is the basic idea of the game there's uh, an extensive amount of decision making but the game itself is fairly simple i would classify this game as a little bit more complex than the basic coup plus expansion but probably not as complex as the larger coup game now that's out there that you've played that that's got a million different characters this one also includes that board where you're moving across where pushing your luck is going to give you that slight edge and of course, the East Side Strangler cards, allowing you to either keep until used or uh, use instantaneously when you draw them. They'll do certain things like let you, letting you move additionally or move backwards, so the cost of Zyko cards and whatnot. Uh, some of them are going to let you discard a Zyko card that you have after looking at them, and then draw a new one face down. In general, you'll be able to know what cards you have that are Dr. Zyko cards, though, face down in front of you, unless you get lucky with one of these cards here. I really enjoyed this game. I like these type of bluffing games. I like Push Your Luck. It molds the both of them together quite well. The artwork is fine. It's like it, it, it does feel it does fit the theme for me, but it's just fine for me. Grant liked it quite a bit more as far as the artwork goes, but the gameplay I really enjoyed specifically. And he was more like, ah, push your luck and bluffing. I'm not so good. Upon saying that, he's like, oh, what are the odds you're gonna win? Ten to one, I would. Say, uh, Ten to one, I'm gonna win. And I'm like, no, you you do pretty well at these games. He's like, no, and. He beat me every single game. But I still enjoyed myself, and they were rather quick, and you got right back into it. Like, let's okay, let's play again. Let's play again. 
play with three players, four players, it works. There is no really difference as far as the number of players, other than in a two-player game, it's definitely more head-to-head, -head, and you're simply having to decide back and forth if the same player is lying. There's no real rest for you and, and push onto the other players to have to decide if they're lying or not, uh, which is nicer in, in a game like this is having more players, definitely, because then you can say, oh, I know they probably have the card, but if they don't, they might, they might win. Uh, and if they do, uh, then, then I'm going to lose a bunch. I don't know. I'd rather have Grant this time have to call Callie out on it. Or I'd rather have Shauna call out Jim, right? It's a lot easier in that regard. And it puts a little bit less pressure on you throughout it. If you want a more head-to-head -head game, it's definitely a two-player game. It does work that way. If you're just basically going back and forth, lying to each other as much as you can. It's likely you can tell the truth in a lot of ways. But for the most part, it's probably going to benefit you to lie. Specifically knowing how many cards are in the deck and which cards have been played. That helps if you got a good memory. I really enjoyed saints and scoundrels and i think for those of you who like pushing your luck and you like a little bit of bluffing and you like the noir detective theme of the game as well as uh, trying not to become insane you'll enjoy this as well if you're looking for a game that's kind of gateway it does fit that critique it's not super super strategic so it's more of like a medium weight game i suggest you definitely take a look down below currently on kickstarter in the description below click on that link and tell me what you think all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment go ahead and hit that bell notification button up there somewhere it does really help helps with the youtube algorithms as all so you can go Go ahead and check us out at unfilteredgamer.com we're giving away the game santorini a beautiful two-player game but it plays with three and four as well and also check out our live streams every wednesday 7 30 p.m pst on facebook we're giving away games we're having fun we're painting miniatures we do all kinds of great stuff and we have sponsors which is really cool all right guys that's all i got for this time and as always i look forward to uh, not being a scoundrel with you next time